All right, well, let's get started. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Mary Eleanor Power. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications with Dalhousie University's College of Continuing Education. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging that Dalhousie University is located in Id Mi'kmaqi, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. We are all treaty people. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Creativity, Innovation, and the Entrepreneurial Mindset. Now I will be um, pro providing a few introductions here and I'm so delighted to have such a wonderful group of uh, brilliant minds um, who are going to walk us through the next 30 minutes. So I'll begin by introducing Karen Cope. So Karen uh, holds a BA in literature from Yale and a PhD in comparative literature and art history from Johns Hopkins, an associate professor at NASCAD University where she is the director of the MFA program. Cope is also a poet, sailor, artist, activist, and blogger. Very, very busy Karen is. She often works collaboratively and has co-created numerous artist and research collectives and projects. With her partner, Marie Finlay, I hope I've pronounced her name correctly, Cope, uh, their name correctly, Cope runs a small artist residency on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia, such a beautiful place, as well as a sailing blog entitled West by East. Together, they have co-authored an illustrated material history of the Lunenburg Foundry, Casting a Legend, and developed communication strategies and policy studies for numerous environmental and activist organizations. Cope's artworks include phot photographs, installations, performances, videos, guerrilla theater, and mixed media and online works. Welcome, Karen. And next, I'll introduce Grant Sullivan. Uh, Grant started his career in the public service as a combat systems engineer with the Canadian Navy. After 10 years, he joined industry as a project manager commercializing and delivering emerging, emerging defense technologies. In 2001, Grant owned and operated his own software company, building software for the utilities industry. For the next 15 years, Grant sold and delivered large-scale digital projects for Fortune 500 firms, leveraging nearshore teams in Atlantic Canada. Currently, Grant leads a federal government team supporting firms to develop and implement strategies for world leading innovation in Atlantic Canada. Grant serves as a board member of the Strongest Families Institute and is a part-time faculty member at Dalhousie University. Grant is an industrial engineer and a project management professional with an MBA and a master's in electronic commerce. Grant is currently completing a PhD program in rural sourcing. Welcome, Grant. And then uh, Martine, Dr. Martine Durier-Kopp is academic dean at NASCAD University. She's also adjunct, adjunct professor in the School of Public Administration at Dalhousie University and founding partner of the CellNet Lab, Collaborative E-Learning Network Lab. Martine came to academia after a career in the federal and Nova Scotia governments. She is a social sciences and human research council supported researcher on e-leadership and managing virtual teams. Now, I'll just make sure that um, all of our, um, our participants, our panelists, and can join us here. So Martine and, uh, and Grant, you can now see them, see them there. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. And now I will pass it on to Martine to get us started with today's webinar. Martine. Martine, are you there? There you are. Oh, Martine, you just seem to be muted. There you are. Oh, we can't seem to hear you. No. There, there you are. Oh my goodness. Okay, we'll get it sorted out. All these brilliant minds who can't figure out how to how to run things. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, Mary Eleanor, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us and taking time from your busy days to learn more about this uh, very unique and exciting program 
that we're so pleased to launch uh, two universities joining forces to bring you transformational thinking and next wave approaches in creativity, innovation, and cultivating the entrepreneurial mindset. So um, I guess it's uh, my pleasure just to introduce um, how we're going to run this uh, this webinar. We have 30 minutes. So we're going to talk about the certificate, what the certificate entails and, and, and how it works. Uh, we have our two fabulous instructors who we will be lucky enough to have teaching you in this program, uh, Karen and Grant, who will walk you through activities. We'll then describe what you can expect to learn, what you will expect to derive from this program in terms of outcomes. And then we'll be very pleased to turn it over to you for questions and answers. Um, and of course, even uh, beyond the 30 minutes, you're more than welcome to contact us at any time um, through Mary Eleanor and uh, you'll be providing a contact information and always happy to provide more information or anything we haven't covered. So as I mentioned, this is a co-venture by uh, Dalhousie Executive Education and NASCAD University. Um, it is a, quite a unique offering which responds to the the kinds of challenges that are posed uh, in this COVID world, uh, colliding uh, forces of, uh, of, you know, of, of health threats and environmental and economic and socioeconomic issues um, that require really different ways of thinking about problems and, and different models for finding solutions. So the program, um, as I said, brings together the, the disciplinary strengths um, unique to each institution. Uh, Dalhousie's Faculty of Management uh, will bring uh, next wave thinking, values-based management, knowledge, know-how and competencies, and NASCAD will enrich the program through um, the world of art, design and craft. So this is really a unique collaboration. We're, we're very pleased to bring the next wave thinking in advanced artistic conceptual approaches and management theory and, and practices. So um, we can go to the next slide now, Mary Eleanor, if you don't mind, thank you. So what you need to know from the outset, first of all, this is a fully online program designed for busy working professionals such as yourselves. So it is fully online offering the kind of flexibility uh, that allows you to do the work, do the readings, take part in the activities, whenever convenient for you, working that around your, your professional and personal lives. There will be some synchronous moments. We'll, we'll explain how those work at predetermined times when we will meet. Those will always be after work hours in the evenings so that you, you, know, you have the time uh, to think uh, in, in a space that is a little bit more quiet than during a busy day. So it's designed for, for busy professionals. It is non-credit, fully online. There are three courses or modules as we call them. We'll explain each one in turn. Uh, each one is four weeks long and it's expected that you could put in or that you should put in between eight to 10 hours a week of um, concentrated work and thought and taking part in the activities and interacting with your with your peers and with your instructor. So the um, the program is delivered through the Brightspace platform, which is an, an online uh, learning management system um, operated through the Dalhousie College of Continuing Education. The pricing is there. And as you will see, we offer you the opportunity of either taking one of the courses, if there is one in particular, creativity, innovation, or entrepreneurial mindset which interests you, or if you want to take the, the full three and get a certificate from uh, NASCAD and Dalhousie Universities. So moving on to the next slide. Um, these are the kinds of students that we're hoping to attract. Um, you have, or anticipating, and, and frankly, who doesn't have some responsibility, commitment, engagement to, uh, to driving innovation. Um, you have entrepreneurial mindsets and ambitions. Perhaps you have been or are an entrepreneur and you're looking to hone those skills and, and drive them to success. Or you're being asked to generate creative ideas, or original ideas to contribute to the success of your organization, whether it's a business, whether it's a government department, 
whether it's a, a non-for-profit or non-governmental organization, a public organization, a collective, a social enterprise, whatever, the, the program is really targeting a very broad um, group of participants and we want to enrich the conversation by the interactions uh, from very different sectors, whether it's health, education, business, retail, wholesale, whatever, um, we, we want to enrich it by having a variety of views and diversity of perspectives. So I'm now going to turn it over to Grant Sullivan, who's going to take you through an activity. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Martine. Um, I thought it'd be useful just to um, put up, uh, this is a purposely busy slide. Sometimes this is how we feel uh, on, a, uh, on an, in any particular day. Our, our world is urbanizing, it's, it's globalizing, it's transforming, it's certainly accelerating. Um, and, you know, every minute um, we have millions of tweets that are generated, websites, photos, videos, and each one of them is available to uh, nearing 4 billion connected human beings throughout the world. It's a fascinating kind of world we're in and they're using over 30 billion connected devices. So lots going on. Um, Ray Kurzweil, a, a well-known futurist that many of you are probably familiar with, predicts that by the mid 2040s, we'll have fully mapped the, the human brain in terms of how it works and how to take advantage of that and, and being able to have machines that can match our capabilities and then go beyond. So he def defines that as a singularity. And in essence, that means that our brains will no longer be able to comprehend all the things that our systems that will do for us beyond that date. Um, material science is using you know technologies that are as old as the hills like origami uh, and, and combining those with with new materials uh small fibers that are stronger order of magnitude stronger than steel nanomaterials building machines that we can't even see to create fantastic new structures you know if we looked at life science for a minute um we can now modify the very essence uh, of life and it's going to offer an opportunity for an increased longevity of our of of us on the call uh and uh and, and precision medicine we're certainly, we've seen recently on the forefront of the commercialization of space. Um, we have advances in clean energy that we hope will literally save our planet um, uh, and certainly expand our potential if we're uh, able to harness them effectively. We have um, augmented reality that gives us whole new digital worlds that we can uh, hopefully uh, take advantage of. And we, certainly we could go on and on and on in this busy slide of the things that are going on uh, around us. We could talk about food security. We could talk about financial volatility, urbanization, globalization. We've talked about all of this leading to societal change. So um, we really just wanted to say, you know, do you feel these are opportunities for you or are these challenges? And maybe think about that for only only a short period of time. We're, we're pressed for time, but think about if these are, are opportunities and challenges. And if you want to use the, the chat, you can. Um, as, as, any, uh, as anyone that's ever taken an MBA course knows, we already know the answer uh, anyway as we think about these. The answer in any of these questions is always, it depends. Uh, it depends on the lens you look through. It depends on the tools you have at your disposal to take advantage of these uh, challenges. And so um, really what this course is about is trying to give you uh, some new tools uh, to harness your creativity to define and protect an innovation that you might have, uh, whether it's in your firm or, or you want to try as an entrepreneurial venture, and then some, some, some exercises and tools to be able to bring that innovation to life. So as a second question, um, just think about, um, you know, how would you set yourself up for success in 2030? If these are the trends that are influencing us now, where are we going to be in only 10 short years? It sounds weird to say 2030 is, is only 10 years away. Um, but by then, uh, you know, math would tell us that we're going to have around 9 billion people. China and India will be the largest economies in the world. 50% of, many people think 50% of the jobs we have today will be automated or look totally different than they do today. More than half of us, many more than half of us will live in cities and one in three of us might live to past 100 years old. Um, the global middle class will be changed significantly. 
So really what we want to do is get your brain thinking about how do I want to position myself for, the, for what's coming in terms of the trends that I can see and think about your objectives. And so I wanted to do is just turn over to Karen to uh, continue the conversation in terms of what your personal objectives for a program like this would be. Thank you. Um, I, I want to ask if perhaps people could respond in the in the chat um, to um, tell us um, what brings you here and what you're looking for or what you need from a program like this. I can give this a, a minute or two. So what what brings you here? Curiosity is a perfectly acceptable response. <laughs> um, and what are you looking for? What do you need from the from the program? So if you could just put a few of those things in the chat, that, that would be great. I'm not, okay, great. Now they're starting to come in. Okay. Well, Great. Um, I'll just I'll just give it a minute for you to find the chat and say what you have to say. Great. Maybe we could move to the next slide while people are answering this question. What brings you here? What you're um, looking for from this program? Wonderful. Great, great answers, really um, very open answers. Um, the first part of this program explores the question of creativity. What is creativity? Where, where does it happen? Where do ideas come from? And um, the, we're looking in part to the arts to uh, look to think about tools and methods that help structure both personal and organizational processes. Uh, so what we'll be doing in the, first, in the first segment is really exploring creative and problem solving processes that are used in art, design, business and enterprise. And doing so for more than one reason. Um, many, many, many studies show that being engaged in creative undertakings, no matter your area of work, um, make you feel like life is worth living. <laughs> and to some extent, I see a response to that in the, in the chat. But it is also where adaptation and response comes from. So, um, so um, in a, walking through a little tiny exercise of a, a sort of sample of the kinds of exercises that we'll be doing in the first section, um, and, and asking you to continue. Um, these will be uh, writing, drawing, uh, you get to pick, right? <laughs> uh, folding, walking. Uh, so things that might seem as if they're not really directed, but that if you pursue them over a period of time, if you attend to them as a process, they, they uh, open things up. They allow you to get in touch with the most creative parts of yourself. So, um, so this will help us to understand what creative flow is and really develop home practice strategies for getting to that flow. Um, so this is really the arts make use of this all the time. And I think that many people in many creative, um, many people with who deploy creativity in all kinds of other facets of life 
are able to do so precisely because they can find that sort of flow. So if we could have the next slide. Um, these are just here in a sense to kind of give you a meditative space. Um, maybe we'll go back to the duck. I don't know. <laughs> um, um, tragedy or, or adaptation here. Um, um, and I wanna walk you through a very short writing exercise before we imagine what we can do with the future and how to adapt to the future, we have to know something about where our ideas come from and how to generate them. So I'm gonna ask you a question that might seem off the wall, but um, um, if you could take a sheet of paper, and this is a very short exercise, um, if you could take a sheet of paper and number one to 10, and just make notes for yourself. You will never show this to someone else. Uh, list times when you felt really well. You felt in the groove, like everything was working. Different times in your life. If you don't have 10, that's okay. But um, you need more than three. as fast, just whatever comes to the top of your mind. Give you a few more seconds. Okay. Now, take one of those moments. Um, maybe it's one that seems to be speaking to you. Um, take one of those moments and um, further down on the page or off to the side, focus on that moment. Remember that moment. Put yourself in that place. And now I'm going to ask you again to just take a few notes, like words, things to jog your memory. Um, um, where are you? How old are you? What time of year is it? Who is with you? Why are you there? Are you indoors or out? Now, remembering this time, this place, sort of put yourself in that space visually and take a walk around. Just really visually take a walk around in that space. What's in front of you? What's behind you? What's to your left? What's to your right? What's above you? What's below you? And then just begin in the present tense. I am, I am 10 years old. I am 25, I am whatever. Um, and write what's happening. Do not worry about spelling any other thing. This is not for anyone else but you. I will give you, I will time this. It's just a couple minutes, but um, so it's not a race, but just um, tell your story.
one minute more. Okay, stop. It's okay if you're not done with your story, you can go back to it later if you want to. Um, but um, there's a series of questions to ask on the basis of this. And again, these are for you, not for us right now. Um, um, just so we can hold that slide there. Um, the questions are, are um, where, where did that memory come from? Where did the clarity of that visualization and your ability to reconnect with that feeling come from? And how can you find those kinds of resources uh, that have to do with what you already know and have already experienced in order to build upon a sense of well-being in order to imagine not recovering where you were necessarily, but what does that feel like? What does it feel like to take a little time out, to be in a flow, to be connected to something that's very meaningful to you? And as you repeatedly do that sort of activity, then figure out how, how to access it, how to access it for other kinds of purposes. For um, so These are processes. These, this, what we just walked through is a process. It's not an end. It's a process that you repeat, like going to the gym, like an exercise. It builds a, a set of muscles and muscle knowledge that then allows you to, to move into much more easily a creative mindset, a creative space to wall out a little bit of time, to take some time and to be able to understand what you mean by well-being, where you want to take your projects, where you want to take other people, um, where your ideas might reside or come from and how you best tap into them. So we'll be looking at techniques for that. Um, I'll wrap up here and pass this over. I hope that was enjoyable. So um, I think it's over to Grant to talk about the the next module. Sure, so thanks very much, Karen. Uh, great explanation of the creative process. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll go quickly through the other pieces, uh, which are really uh, the second course, we kind of pick up those ideas. We've come up with some ideas um, from, uh, from the inspiration that we've been able to go through those exercises. Now we've picked up those ideas and um, in a collaboration between Dal, uh, Dalhousie and uh, NASCAD, we're going to um, have a, a shared uh, teaching experience talk about the, bringing those innovations to life. So um, what we're going to do is talk about how to bring that novel idea you have into a workable solution or, or product. We're going to talk about how you're going to strategically think your way through that process. How are you going to make sure that you're staying in touch with your stakeholders and your market, uh, listening to their needs and incorporating those into your products? Uh, how are you going to access the markets that um, that you need to, or even talking about how you're going to do that within your own organization. What's the organization's appetite for this type of activity? How do you get it done? 
and we'll talk about building and sustaining those business models. The last uh, module then it picks up from now you have a workable I idea and you're going to talk about how you're actually going to implement that. So how are you going to build that into a plan and execute that plan, implement and uh, have your customers adopt that product. That again is a, is a collaboration between Dalhousie and NASCAD, uh, more focused on those, those, those operational components um, um, about launching your product, um, fast following it with those continual improvement ideas uh, and making sure that you're uh, getting traction in your market and thinking about adjacent uh, markets. So we'll talk about positioning, we'll talk about financing, we'll talk about risk assessment and management, we'll talk about the various entrepreneurial frameworks we're going to use to measure your own progress and as we look at, at transferring that product into uh, the market we'll, we'll develop some some other soft skills like networking, collaboration, change management, stakeholder management, um, and probably arrive back at some of the things Karen touched on, which is how do we have self-resilience? How do we look inside ourselves for that journey that's sometimes difficult um, and, and trying to build some ad adaptability and optimism in the process? If you think about uh, many of the best examples of firms today, like Ideal Labs and others, they celebrate the fact that they think very divergently at the beginning of a process and they go through an exercise to be convergent into what they have to do next. And then they're, they don't think that they're done. Then they reuse those tools to say, what do we learn? How do we do that process again? And they're continually doing those. And that's the focus of this, this program. So maybe I will leave it to Martine now to uh, wrap up. Thank you. Thank you, Grant and Karen. Um, what you will learn, I think uh, everything is on this um, this slide, which we're going to share with you. So there's no need to go through each one. But basically, this uh, program of you know three courses or modules will give you new aptitudes, competencies, capabilities, whatever we call them, and the know-how, meaning specific tools and approaches that you can use in the creation of uh, strategies, uh, in, in problem solving, and of course, in identifying seizing opportunities. So we're, we're there to help you spark the creativity and walk it through the phases. So many ideas fail. We'll talk about failure as well and what, are the, what it takes to have those uh, creative thoughts uh, lead to a successful implementation. So we'll we'll walk you through all that. And before um, we turn over to Mary Eleanor and uh, and questions, I just want to leave you with a with an interesting uh, finding from an IBM survey of uh, 1,500 CEOs from 33 countries who claim that creativity is the most important factor in the ability to navigate an increasingly complex world. And what world could be more complex than ours? So we'll leave it at that and uh, turn over to you, Mary Eleanor. Yes, so mindful, uh, mindful of our time. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining us. If there are questions that you have that you want to include in the chat, please feel free to do so. And as Martine said, we will be sharing a copy of this PowerPoint um, later today along with the link to the recording of the webinar. So you can certainly share that with your peers as well. I loved the writing exercise that Karen walked us through and I'm sure that um, the recording would give us a good opportunity to revisit that as well um, at a different point. So um, I'll just check the chat here to see if there are any questions that are coming through. Um, and, uh, and as Martine said, and um, what we'll try to do as well is include in the email um, contact, email contact for, um, for Karen and Grant and Martine if you, if you have any questions um, about the program. And, uh, and I would also encourage you to um, please, uh, before you leave uh, the Zoom space, that you fill out a quick survey that um, gives us just a better understanding of how you uh, enjoy today's webinar, if you have any feedback, and also if you want to stay connected with us and learn about other online events that we have coming up. So uh, it doesn't appear that we have any questions, which means that everyone has the answers that they need. So, <laughs> so that's, a good, that's a good sign. Um, so uh, thank you all very much again. Oh, we have one. One chat here. Where did you find? Where do you find the survey? So, 
Um, thanks, Raquel. So when you when you click away from from the meeting, you will be prompted um, with the the survey. Um, so you should see that you, um, just as you as you leave the meeting, it should automatically um, be there for you. So um, thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Karen and Grant and Martine for, for your leadership during the past 30 minutes and walking us through all the details. And, uh, and then we will leave it there. So looking forward to um, following up with many of you. I hope that uh, you'll enroll in the program, which is starting in January. And uh, take care and have a wonderful rest of your day.